And now join us here on the Inland Sports Show to help us get all ready for the CIF Southern Section Open Division Championship matches. It is Santiago girls head soccer coach Mike Fleming and and coach, before we get to your Sharks and about the season and going into this championship match, it was a new format this year. There's a new open division. It was a an opening round that had two legs, so you got a home match and your opponent also got a home match. What did you think of this new format where they took the aggregate of two matches to, to advance? You know, I, I, I think it's still settling, right? Um, <laughs> I, I, you know... Um, I like the fact that you can get uh, two games not having a one and done scenario because um, you know sometimes you know when you when you if you've ever exited um, because of a penalty shootout um, if you've ever had a last minute you know deflection or unlucky goal against the run of play then you know that um, those moments are really frustrating and and it's hard to swallow especially for a group of seniors that that that's bought in and worked hard so uh, knowing that you have two games potentially you know and and keep it close and compete that um you know the first and the second game can can mean something so you know and it's a different environment in terms of you know now each team can say hey we got to do it on our home turf and uh you get to defend that or somebody can come in and try to steal some points so i, I think it was fun i think it's a good it's a good um attempt to kind of change things up and mm -hmm. and uh you know it, it, it's exciting actually you know the aggregate was was fun because you are you're thinking and you're calculating I was like okay we're plus one here we're going in the match we're up two so okay if we this if we that so you've got different scenarios instead of just like hey we got to win yeah. well that's what I want to ask you next because um uh a long time ago in a galaxy far far away I, I played four years of varsity I played one year in college where I hung it up and I, I felt there was a lot of matches where my team won, and I'm like, man, we, there's there's no reason, there's no way we should have beat that team, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, we were the better team, but soccer is just cruel like that. Do you feel like at least in this format, the better team will advance because you you've got those two matches to combine, and and like you said, going into your second match um, against Los Alamitos, you you kind of knew like, hey, even if we tie, we're gonna advance. We like we know what we got to do. Yeah. So, you know. Um you would think that with two matches after playing 100 and what 160 minutes that um the better team or the team that should be quote unquote should be advancing is probably the team that that deserved to go forward because you know um whatever might not have clicked or worked or that you thought like hey if this could have gone right in the first match or if that didn't happen in the first match well you're literally getting a second match to try to make those adjustments and make those changes um and i i actually think coaching maybe comes into play too coaching and your ability as a coach and their ability as members of a team to not only identify changes, but to make the adjustments and then for the players to actually have to go out and execute. Um, so that second game, I think a lot of times adjustments can be key to where I think um, adjustments in terms of what a coach is seeing or doing and providing as a staff to their players can, can play a huge part because now you've played them once, you can go out there and you can see, well, you, of course, you don't have a lot of time to train because they're still such few time between mm -hmm. the game but uh, at least if you can somehow identify it now it's a matter of okay can we, can we address the issues and then change what happened the first match yeah it's kind of like a, a long halftime adjustment I guess right you play the first game you go into the locker room you got a couple days to to reassess and, and go into that second game I'm just curious though in that semifinal game against Los Al did did your approach change knowing hey we don't have to win to advance like like we were mentioning the draw to move on. Did it change the way you guys played? Did you stack up your defense? So, you know, hey, let's just, even if we go 0-0, zero, zero, we're going to, you know, advance. Did it change the way you coached maybe going in that semifinal? Uh, you know, it, it's funny because the staff, we had a lot of discussions about this. Um, but ultimately what we what we determined was the, the best plan is to stay the course of what we've consistently done. Um stay true to our identity, what our game preparation is, what our what our formation is, what our principles are, what our what our method is for how we approach any game. So it wasn't even about win or lose. It wasn't about we have plus one because we felt like maybe psychologically now we're, you know, you get scored on and then now everything that you said and why you were doing a thing goes out the window mm -hmm. versus, hey, this is just, let's approach this as we would any other match. Okay, sure, the stakes are different. Um, and, and ma it means more now, but don't let the moment in the game be bigger than us, right? Let's let's try to define the match instead of the match define us, and that's something we discussed. 
to where um, we just tried to take it as the same old thing they've been doing since they were three, four, however years old, um, and just you and the ball and go and play, you know. Um, plus, we didn't want to make any changes and outsmart ourselves thinking, oh, well, they're going to do this, and they're probably going to push for a goal, and they might put this player here or do this formation-wise, and maybe they're going to change. So now you're kind of like – if you like sometimes the best answer is, is, is to do nothing. <laughs> Don't overthink it, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, of course, in the game, you're managing adjustments then based on what you maybe thought. So we had a game plan in terms of if if A, then B, if B, then C. So we had ideas of what maybe they would do. And credit to Pat Rossi at Los Al. They did come out and they switched a couple players. You know, their starting lineup was different. They had a certain player here that was now there and another player there that was now here. And they did some different things. But uh, we were prepared. The girls were ready. You try to go over those scenarios just to have them prepared and uh, be ready to make the adjustments. And thankfully, we have some some girls, you know, for the most part, most of our girls, not some, they they have a high understanding of the game in terms of soccer IQ. And we spend a lot of time having discussions and trying to poke holes in things situationally because, you know, the game itself is beautiful. But there's no way you can fully be prepared for a match because – Every time that ball moves, people are in different positions, different things are happening. So you've got to constantly, you know, asking questions of yourself to 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 solve problems, to, to give an answer. So. Coach, what, what would you say has gotten you to this point? What have you guys done well as a team all season long to put you in this championship match? You know, we have we have a we have a lot of seniors on the team. Um, we have a lot of um, girls that were, you know, I think coming back this year, I think we had 21 girls from last year's team returning, which for most teams is a full squad, right? Um, so there's a lot of seniority. There's a lot of experience as well from even say the underclassmen. So, and that's in the high school program as well as outside with club. So there is a, there's an understanding of the game there. I think continuity and coaching and messaging in terms of what it is we do, what our identity is, and just being brave to continue to, even if you're struggling, you continue to, you continue to, this is how we want to play. This is what we want to do. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to stay true to that. Know who we are. Um, having great players is always, you know, it's always a plus. We've been blessed with great players. I I personally, as head coach, I've been blessed with a great staff, you know, Shai Jollier from Future. And we brought Jesse Hardiman over as well. He was at Corona. Um, Erica Holguin, she's been my right-hand quote-unquote man for 20 years. Um you know, got a great goalkeeper, uh, former Shark, Jacob Hansen, goalkeeper coach. So just having a staff and, and trusting them to do what they're tasked to do um, to where they connect. So there's so many little pieces that go into it. And just, um, you know, that's, it's it's a very hard question to ask because there's so many things that go into it and things have to fall in place. But like I said, having a great staff and great players it makes my job so much easier. And our success, I think, is a result of all those things. All right, Coach, finally, without giving away all your secrets, what do you think the Sharks have to do well to get that win against Santa Margarita on Friday? It's funny. Somebody somebody approached me. It's actually Alexis uh, Burrell, um, oh, yeah. the former Centennial principal, right? Oh, yeah, I'm a big fan of hers, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Alexis, she, you know, there's a meeting at CIF for basketball today, and we all went down. We had to pick up our soccer stuff. She's all, hey, you want to know? You want to know how you can win? I was like, how's that? She's all, score more than you. Right. So, um, you know, the joke, the joke would be um, score more goals. Yeah. They, but, uh, you know, honestly, I think we continue to um, approach this match as we have every other match this year. Um, sure, it's for everything. But, um, you know, it's not just about getting to the final. It's about completing your task. Stay true to the process of what allowed us to get here in the first place. Right. Um, it wasn't focusing on winning. It was focusing on just doing the little things, competing, um, making adjustments. And, you know, our slogan this year is better every day. So, um, you know, if you're doing things like that day after day after day, um, then how can good things not follow? Right. So I think that we just we just need to go out there and ask questions of them. They're going to ask questions of us. And I think whoever answers more accurately um, is going to be the, the one victorious. I mean, their story program speaks, you know, for itself, you can open the CIF record book and see the number of championships, the number of great players they've had. Um, they they're they're they definitely have a resume that says, you know, this is a, a great program. Defending champs in the in the regional and CIF. 
So, um, you know, you know, I'm I'm happy. Uh, you know, interesting fact: I've been coaching 25 years. It's the first time we've ever played San Juan Reed. Is it really? Never, never played them. That's nope. amazing. Like, I mean, because obviously you talked about the success they've had, but you know, yeah. you're too humble yeah. and modest to say how much success you guys have had too at we've, Santiago. We've never crossed paths. Wow. You know? I, it's just never lined up. Uh, we were supposed to play last year. Um, I had a game all lined up, but then they, they got a new coach. So in the process of an old coach to a new coach, um, things kind of fell apart mm. and uh, they, they, they went and ran the table. So it's like, okay. And I, it's maybe it's kind of a destiny thing. Maybe huh? <laughs> here we are destined to meet each other. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Excited for the girls. I'm excited for the school, excited for the, the area here representing the Inland Empire and Corona yeah. specifically. So it should be fun. Well, hopefully those inspirational words from Dr. Burrill will propel you guys to a lot of goals on right. Friday score, against San Juan. Right? <laughs> right. The, the funny thing is, is that advice applies for both teams, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Coach Fleming, listen, I always appreciate the time. Best of luck on Friday and try to bring home that title to uh, Santiago for us. We'd appreciate that. Well, th thank you for having me on and uh, appreciate everything you do. Yes, sir. That is Mike Fleming, the head girls soccer coach for the Sharks here on the Inland Sports Show.